A manhunt that began with near cinematic drama has come to an end in equally unforgettable fashion. One of the escaped convicts is dead, the other is alive, and reportedly opening up to authorities. How do these killers hide for so long? And is there trouble ahead for prison officials? ABC's Lindsay Janice is on the scene tonight. Today in Malone, New York, a community celebrating the end of the three-week-long manhunt. We're, we're safe. Our community is safe. Convicted cop killer David Sweat finally apprehended after being shot twice Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Just a mile and a half from the Canadian border and 48 hours after his accomplice Richard Matt was shot and killed by authorities. The search spanning 22 days and hundreds of miles, with over a thousand officers combing the dense woods, checking every car and every house. And as authorities question sweat, new details and a new timeline are emerging. So much still a mystery, but giving us a peek into their life on the run. Sweat actually uh, disengaged from Matt about five days ago. Sweat felt that Matt was slowing him down, as a matter of fact. And just 15 miles away from where Sweat was captured, ABC News has obtained these exclusive photos of the hideout where Matt spent the final hours of his life. Peeling walls, musty cushions, torn curtains, a tea kettle still on the stove. This is the camper where uh, Matt was Hiding. Photographer John Shoda lives across the street, snapping away as his officers closed in. Let's get a look inside. It's amazing he found it, though. He must have just stumbled on it. This is a nice anymore. place to sleep, huh? Wow. Kept him, the bugs off him. <laughs> That's for sure. Matt and Sweat escaped from the Clinton Correctional Facility in Dannemore, New York, on June 6th. Authorities say the two men had inside help facilitating their escape. Joyce Tilly Mitchell, a supervisor in the prison Taylor department, arrested and charged with helping them break free. Matt groomed her to the point of assisting them in escaping from Clinton Correctional. Mitchell pleaded not guilty, but officials say escape may not have been the only thing on their minds. They would kill Mitchell's husband and then get in the car and drive on the uh, theory that uh, Mitchell was in love with one or both of them. Sweat and Matt plotting for five months. Mitchell allegedly smuggling them tools in hamburger meat. She advised us that she had placed them into a hamburger and then a correction officer would come and collect it and then bring it into uh, inmate Matt. Police say the men used power tools to drill through a wall and work their way down four stories, shimmying through 24-inch pipes. After climbing through a series of catwalks and more pipes, they walked three to 400 yards down a tunnel, coming to a manhole that they sawed open with their tools. The manhole where they surfaced was only one block from the prison walls. According to authorities, Mitchell was supposed to be the driver of a getaway car. Instead, checking herself into the hospital with what was called a panic attack. When Mitchell doesn't show up, the Mexico plan gets foiled and then they head uh, north towards Canada. The inmates were added to the U.S. Marshals' most wanted list, rewards set at $50,000 apiece. Posters of the men distributed along both the Canadian and Mexican borders. The escaped killers considered armed and dangerous. Sweat was convicted for killing a police officer and Matt in jail for killing and dismembering his former boss's body. Cop killer is one thing, but like dismembering somebody is like, oh, it's, it's really out there. So I kind of just like, you know, he's one of those guys you keep in front of you, you don't turn your back on. Eric Jensen was an inmate three years ago, working with Matt and Sweat in the prison tailor shop. But Matt and Sweat housed in the honor block, which meant special privileges. The inmates lived next door to each other, but the district attorney says that wasn't always the case. It sounds like somebody in the prison granted their request to be put next to each other. Is that what you're what saying? I, that's what I understand. After the initial escape, the two men seemingly vanish for two weeks. Then on Monday, the focus shifting back upstate, a definitive clue in a cabin just 20 miles from the prison. This is a confirmed lead for us, and we're going to run this to ground. John Stockwell was at his hunting camp Saturday with his dog when he discovered signs of people inside the cabin. He says he saw one man running away. Then police finding the men's DNA on food inside. Several days pass, and the men separate. Matt making his way to that camper. 
You can see there's a little bit of food in the cupboard. Yep. I don't know what but it is. No, but. sugar or flour or something, but wow. it's food. <laughs> when you're on the run for that long, anything's this, this, food. This would have been a welcome shelter, I'm sure. Yeah. And you basically. say they shot him just down here? Down on the right. I believe down on the right because there's a whole staging area down there. We got one guy down. Oh, yeah! Matt making a fatal mistake Friday afternoon attempting to carjack a couple driving by. They drove on about eight miles and realized that there was a bullet hole through the back of the camper. Border Patrol SWAT agents following the likely path of that shot into the woods. One of them spotting Matt after he heard a cough, shooting the double murderer three times in the head when he refused to surrender. A tactical team from uh, Customs and Border Protection um, met up with, with Matt in the woods, challenged him, and uh, he was shot dead. Investigators found a 20-gauge shotgun on his body and alcohol in the area, leading them to believe he'd been drinking. An examination of Matt's body revealed bug bites, blisters, and minor abrasions consistent with living in the woods. And then, just yesterday, law enforcement running into sweat in Constable, New York, right near the Canadian border. 21-year veteran State Police Sergeant Jay Cook, a firearms instructor, saw sweat jogging on the side of the road around 3.20 p.m. When sweat ran, Sergeant Cook chased him through the field. Jeff Angus watching it unfold. It's like a tropical forest in, in up here. I mean, it's thick. But uh, the boar is just, I mean, a few miles away. Sergeant Cook firing two shots at Sweat right before he could reach the edge of that forest. If he would have gotten that tree line, if they didn't shoot him, he probably would have got away. Sweat rushed to the Albany Medical Center, where tonight he is in serious condition. In his bag, authorities say they found tools, bug spray, maps, and Pop-Tarts. So you think he was trying to cross the border? I believe so, yeah. I mean, Canada's right there. If you go down that road, there's a dead-end road down here, and it's only two miles to Canada. <laughs> Took 22 days, but we can now confirm, as of two days ago, Mr. Matt is deceased, and the other escapee, Mr. Sweat, is in custody. <laughs> Residents now applauding the massive law enforcement effort. We're just proud, we're happy. I mean, even knowing it was our local Jay Cook that got the last one, I mean, it just fills you with a sense of pride. Tonight, authorities say their investigation on how the two inmates were able to escape is ongoing and that it's led to a wider look at the Clinton Correctional Facility and heroin trafficking inside. <laughs> Sweat still recovering and authorities still questioning him eager to find out more details and eager to put him back behind bars. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Janice in Malone, New York.